Hallelujah, praise God. Thank you, Jesus. Just go ahead this morning and be grateful to God, be grateful to Jesus, the lover of our souls, the shepherd of our souls, the protector of our destinies, the maker of our lives, the reason for our living, the reason for our being, the reason for the seasons of our life. We give you praise. Blessed be your name. Thank you, your goodness. Thank you, your mercy. Thank you, your kindness. Thank you, your faithfulness, Jesus. We are grateful. We do not take it for granted that you are always with us and on our side, that you are for us. If God be for us, who can be against us? We are grateful. Thank you for the gift of family. Thank you for the gift of relationship. Thank you for loving us. Thank you for calling us and accepting us in the beloved. We are grateful, Jesus. Blessed be your name. And God's people said, Amen. Amen. Good morning. You're welcome to another edition of Conform. Conform is our daily online devotional in which we sit at the feet of Jesus so he could breathe on us. And so we can become more and more like him with each passing day. We are going to start by reading the Bible as usual. And we are reading from the book of John chapter 8. John chapter 8. Chapter 8 But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. At dawn he appeared again in the temple courts where all the people gathered around him, and he sat down to teach them. The teachers of the law and the Pharisees brought in a woman caught in adultery. They made her stand before the group and said to Jesus, Teacher, this woman was caught in the act of adultery. The law of Moses commanded us to stone such women. Now, what do you say? They were using this question as a trap in order to have a basis for accusing him. But Jesus bent down and started to write on the ground with his finger. When they kept on questioning him, he straightened up and said to them, If any one of you is without sin, let him be the first to throw a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote on the ground. At this... Those who heard began to go away one at a time, the older ones first, until only Jesus was left with the woman still standing there. Jesus straightened up and asked her, Woman, where are they? Has no one condemned you? No one, sir, she said. Then neither do I condemn you, Jesus declared. Go now and leave your life of sin. When Jesus spoke again to the people, he said, I am the light of the world. Whoever follows me will never walk in darkness, but will have the light of life. The Pharisees challenged him. Here you are, appearing as your own witness. Your testimony is not valid. Jesus answered, Even if I testify on my own behalf, my testimony is valid. For I know where I came from and where I am going. But you have no idea where I come from or where I am going. You judge by human standards. I pass judgment on no one. But if I do judge, my decisions are right, because I am not alone. I stand with the Father who sent me. In your own law it is written that the testimony of two men is valid. I am one who testifies for myself. My other witness is the Father who sent me. Then they ask him, Where is your Father? You do not know me or my father, Jesus replied. If you knew me, you would know my father also. He spoke these words while teaching in the temple area near the place where the offerings were put. Yet no one seized him because his time had not yet come. Once more, Jesus said to them, I am going away and you will look for me and you will die in your sin. Where I go, you cannot come. This made the Jews ask, Will he kill himself? Is that why he says, Where I go, you cannot come? But he continued, You are from below. I am from above. You are of this world. I am not of this world. I told you that you would die in your sins. If you do not believe that I am the one I claim to be, you will indeed die in your sins. Who are you? They asked. Just what I have been claiming all along, Jesus replied. I have much to say in judgment of you, but he who sent me is reliable, 
and what I have heard from him, I tell the world. They did not understand that he was telling them about his father. So Jesus said, when you have lifted up the son of man, then you will know that I am the one I claim to be, and that I do nothing on my own, but speak just what the father has taught me. The one who sent me is with me. He has not left me alone, for I always do what pleases him. Even as he spoke, many put their faith in him. To the Jews who had believed in him, Jesus said, If you hold to my teaching, you are really my disciples. Then you will know the truth, and the truth will set you free. They answered him, We are Abraham's descendants, and have never been slaves of anyone. How can you say that we shall be set free? Jesus replied, I tell you the truth. Everyone who sins is a slave to sin. Now, a slave has no permanent place in the family, but a son belongs to it forever. So if the son sets you free, you will be free indeed. I know you are Abraham's descendants, yet you are ready to kill me because you have no room for my word. I am telling you what I have seen in the Father's presence, and you do what you have heard from your father. Abraham is our father, they answered. If you were Abraham's children, said Jesus, then you would do the things Abraham did. As it is, you are determined to kill me, a man who has told you the truth that I heard from God. Abraham did not do such things. You are doing the things your own father does. We are not illegitimate children, they protested. The only father we have is God himself. Jesus said to them, If God were your father, you would love me, for I came from God and now am here. I have not come on my own, but he sent me. Why is my language not clear to you? Because you are unable to hear what I say. You belong to your father, the devil, and you want to carry out your father's desire. He was a murderer from the beginning, not holding to the truth, for there is no truth in him. When he lies, he speaks his native language. For he is a liar and the father of lies. Yet, because I tell the truth, you do not believe me. Can any of you prove me guilty of sin? If I am telling the truth, why don't you believe me? He who belongs to God hears what God says. The reason you do not hear is that you do not belong to God. The Jews answered him, Aren't we right in saying that you are a Samaritan and demon-possessed? I am not possessed by a demon, said Jesus, but I honor my father, and you dishonor me. I am not seeking glory for myself, but there is one who seeks it, and he is the judge. I tell you the truth, if anyone keeps my word, he will never see death. At this the Jews exclaimed, Now we know that you are demon-possessed. Abraham died, and so did the prophets. Yet you say that if anyone keeps your word, he will never taste death. Are you greater than our father Abraham? He died, and so did the prophets. Who do you think you are? Jesus replied, If I glorify myself, my glory means nothing. My father, whom you claim is your God, is the one who glorifies me. Though you do not know him, I know him. If I said I did not, I would be a liar like you. But I do know him and keep his word. Your father Abraham rejoiced at the thought of seeing my day. He saw it and was glad. You are not yet 50 years old, the Jews said to him. And you have seen Abraham? I tell you the truth, Jesus answered. Before Abraham was born, I am. At this, they picked up stones to stone him. But Jesus hid himself, slipping away from the temple ground. Hallelujah. The reading of the word of God is always blessed. We thank God for the wisdom of the word. Now, we've been talking about conquering the seven great nations or seven great mountains that we need to conquer in order to be able to establish the mountain of the Lord's house upon all other hills. Uh, uh, Isaiah chapter 2 
it talks about the mountain of the Lord that being set upon all other hills, so that it will stand it will stand tall above every other hill. He said that is the only way that men will be all men will be able to flow to it. He said they will say to themselves, "Come, let us go to the mountain of the of the God of Jacob, that He might teach us His ways, and we'll walk in His paths." In other words, in order before we can command the respect and the attraction and the ears and the attention of the world, the mountain of the Lord's house must stand taller than all these other mountains. That's what taking the gate is all about. We must be stronger at the gates of these things we are talking about, at the gates of these institutions we are talking about. Otherwise, the world will not take us seriously. So we started talking about... Um, uh, okay, so today I want us to talk about the nation of the Gegashites. The Gegashites. Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 1. Again, do not forget. It mentions seven nations there. And the Gegashites were one of them. The nation of the Gegesha, Gegeshites means one dwelling in a clay soil. One dwelling on a clay soil. Okay, one dwelling on a clay source, or one who arrives from a pilgrimage, one who arrives from a pilgrimage, or dwelling on a clay soil. Now, this this uh, nation um, um, refers to or signifies the gate of arts and entertainment. The gates of arts and entertainment. What do you do to one who just arrived from a pilgrimage? Hospitality. Hospitality, entertainment. Entertainment. That's what you do to the one who just arrived from a pilgrimage. He said one dwelling on a clay soil. What was the first things that was used for sculpting or molding? It was clay. It was clay. So these gates refers to the gates of arts. And entertainment we must be able to take over uh, in the in that industry in that sector of life if we are serious about the, about commanding the attention of the world look at the gates equivalent scripture in lamentation chapter 5 verse 14 lamentation chapter 5 verse 14 the elders have ceased gathering at the gates the young men from their music the elders have ceased gathering from at the gates, the young men from their music. So there's a connection between the elders gathering at the gates, which is which talks about governance, and the young men who do music at the gates. Very important. There is a very powerful connection there. In Psalm 69, verse 12, we also see it. Bible says, those who sit in the gate speak against me and I am the song of the drunkards. Where do people get drunk? At nightclubs. Where do people get drunk? At bars. At places of entertainment. Those who sit in the gate speak against me and I am the song of the drunkards. So the, the gate, the Gegeshites uh, uh, represent or signifies the gate of arts and entertainment. We must take over at these gates. We must take over entertainment, every individually, and as churches, and as institutions, we must take over. Tomorrow we are going to take time to talk about how to take over the gate of arts and entertainment. But suffice it this morning to, to remind us, or to uh, let us know, that we need to take over. We need to take over. We need to take over in the gate of arts, and entertainment. I mean, entertainment. Uh, 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 they, 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 they just open the hotels and the cinemas and all that after a long time. Uh, you, you, you see, and um, the, you'll see how people will rush to those places because people have missed entertainment. They have missed entertainment. No matter what happens in any society, sir, the places of entertainment are always full. No matter how poor people are, even the poorest of poor, the little he will have, you will see him go to the bar and he will enjoy himself. People, humans cannot be divorced from entertainment. 
we must take over in the social sector that's what it means uh, you know in the enjoyment sector in the hospitality sector we must take over because hospitality entertainment and arts uh, people i mean there's so much trouble everywhere people just want to relax that's why people will pay you will pay you I, I heard about somebody doing a show one of these com comedians and they said a table of like 20 people or so uh was to cost about uh, six million on about i was i was shocked i was shocked at how much people pay to just go and sit down and somebody will be cracking jokes sometimes with them abusing them you know uh, in order to make them laugh I mean, people will do anything to go for entertainment. So we must, uh, we must become entertainment conscious. We must take over these gates. Uh, the people of God who are called into this industry must stand up and begin to take over. Okay, we must begin to take over, and we must do entertainment in a way that it glorifies Jesus. We must do entertainment. We must do arts. We must do socials in a way that it glorifies Jesus. Glory to God. Tomorrow we are going to talk about maybe like six or seven or even maybe up to ten things we may be able to do in order to take over at the gates of entertainment. Okay? Praise God. In order to take over the Gedeshite nations. I see God helping us. I see God helping you. I see God helping me. In the name of Jesus. The things we are discussing are, are very tall orders. They are not mean things. Because if we look around the people of the kingdom of darkness are seem to 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 feel everywhere they seem to have overtaken in all these sectors but like the book of amos says jesus will help us to take over and i see jesus helping you i see him helping us i see him helping his churches all around the world i see him helping his families all around the world to take over systematically and miraculously in the name of jesus don't forget as you go, today is the best day you have ever lived. It's a day of signs, it's a day of wonders, it's a day of miracles, it's a day of favor, it's a day of grace, it's a day of mercy. I hear every duty mercy. Somebody will encounter every duty mercy today. Every duty mercy. Every duty mercy. Every duty mercy. In the name of Jesus, the favor of God will speak for you. Great grace will shout at the top of its voice on your behalf today. In the name of the Lord Jesus, that which was meant to sink you will link you up to destiny. That which was meant to sink you will link you up to destiny. Uh, that where, where they threw you, so thinking you will sink, all of a sudden they will find you floating. In the name of the Lord Jesus, glory to God. What they set you up to, to trip you. It will, it will be, it will be your, your stepping stone to greatness in the name of Jesus. It is well with you. Calamity is far from you. Pestilence is not your portion. Greatness is your Lord today in Jesus' name. Plagues, pestilence, calamity, unrest, aggression, violence, kidnapping, they will be not, they will not be mentioned anywhere near us. In the name of Jesus, we we'll bind sickness, we we'll bind disease, we we'll bind infirmity. We we'll command them to take their baggages and leave and leave the people of God now. In the name of Jesus, let there be healing, let there be deliverance. In the name of Jesus, we we'll pray for somebody struggling with alcohol. We we'll will bind, we we'll bind the spirit of alcoholism and will deliver you from the manipulation of that wicked spirit. Now, in the name of Jesus, so shall it be. And the people of Jesus said, Amen. Please do have a splendid day.